I think there's a great understanding that we can't let the economic crisis turn into a human crisis. Um, you know, the food and fuel crises already knocked the uh, poor back and what we can't let happen is the financial crisis smothers them. So really the emphasis has been on that. How do you build on the legacy of this administration? How does the new administration build on that? It's quite a legacy and, uh, you know, both Senators McCain and Obama have reiterated time and again that they are prepared to go the mile with this. So it, it, it focused on that. Well, actually, since you mentioned that, uh, yesterday in an interview with Kofi Annan, he very much praised President Bush's work in Africa, saying that he, he might not have been popular elsewhere, but what he had done in Africa was really quite uh, outstanding, and then went on to say what he expected from the new U.S. administration. Let's have a listen to that. He was more helpful to Africa than most U.S. presidents on the AIDS issue and other, other uh, economic policies. And I hope whoever comes in will maintain that policy and build on it. I hope poverty, climate uh, change will be there right along with the, uh, the fight for economic stability and prosperity. Um, Kofi Annan there, presumably you'd agree with what he said, but I'd like to ask you about some criticism I read from um, J. Brian Atwood, who's Dean of the Hubert H. Humphrey Institute of Public Affairs at the University of Minnesota, also Administrator of USA during the Clinton administration. And while he also praised President Bush's work, he said really that in terms of the current administration, there hadn't been much coordination when it came to uh, trying to co make a cohesive international aid effort in Africa. Is that something with which you'd agree or needs to be worked on? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I agree with that. I mean, what really has exemplified this, uh, the Bush administration's efforts in Africa has, one been, has been one of cooperation. That's what makes it unusual. It's sort of like a paradigm for the future. Um, you know, the cooperation was across the floor. It was the Senate, it was the House, it was the President, it was, uh, you know, uh, Frist and Kerry, Republican and Democrat, it, it was Don Payne from the Congress. It was a whole slew of people, but directed by the President. And when the President would authorize um, you know, millions, uh, billions from Congress, they would add to it. Um, it, 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 is a, it is a bizarre phenomenon. It's like America discovered suddenly um, this great continent uh, and just out of beyond self-interest, there were, there were other reasons they were doing it. And I, I think, you know, this is going to be one of the political, um, you know, major stories of the 21st century. So I don't think it's a choice for any new uh, uh, incoming administration, they must deal with this. And as for international cooperation, often it was, the, it was the White House that pushed the Europeans in a given direction that they had to meet them on. And, you know, I'm not afraid of the American administration reneging on his promises. I'm afraid of Sarkozy. I'm afraid of Berlusconi, whom I wrote to this morning, completely crapping out on their, comp uh, on their promises. This cannot be allowed. Uh, just uh, before we we have we leave it, I'm wondering if you could expand on why you fear EU leaders more than you might uh, the next US administration, given that the economy is dominating the campaign there at the moment. Uh, because I, I don't understand how they roll back on this in America. I mean, we have quite close ties with uh, both the campaign, uh, both campaigns, and their uh, and their African development people. And ev even today at the conference, they were insistent to me personally that this was going to go ahead and more. Um, but in in Europe, that's not what we're getting. I mean, I was with Sarkozy two weeks ago. I was with uh, Christine Lagarde, the finance minister, and they're just saying they have no choice but to cut back. That's my point, but we cannot literally afford to turn the economic crisis into a financial one. Um, you know, the impact upon uh, us by cutting aid to the poor will be enormous. This isn't the time to do it. There, there's other ways of doing things, of ameliorating the effects. Berlusconi is head of the G8. The next G8 is going to be in Italy. He cannot now turn around and put Africa on the programme as he's doing while Italy slashes and decimates its aid budget. It's so tiny in the first place. The sums are so minuscule. It will not make any difference to the domestic economy.